This tutorial is designed to look at the concept of a coding strategy. And by that I mean a predefined strategy, um, which usually involves three uh, you know, elements, which would be coding, uh, managing codes, and documenting codes, usually through analytical memos or summary statements as a way of synthesizing the codes and, and reducing data. The idea of documenting codes and having a coding strategy is that um, that you first of all get agreement with your supervisor that the method you're using is entirely consistent with your chosen methodology and is rigorous enough and uh, both you and your supervisory team are clear as that as to the approach. Um, second, it helps you to pass the data several times which helps to avoid overcoding or undercoding and it helps to know if you're coding what's coming next in terms of the processes so it helps you to code in a more uh, appropriate way to your project. Um, the idea of passing the data several times is also to move from the initial coding which are often you know participant led um, descriptive deconstructing of the data from its original chronology into a set of initial themes through to um, the more um, interpretive and researcher and participant led codes where you have room as an expert now to interpret the data more and, and therefore it's both participant and researcher led. Finally, to the more uh, theoretical based, you know, abstract codes, which are all researcher led and which lead you into findings and conclusions. So this example is from NUI Galway, from a project I worked with, with a research team down there. Um, they've allowed us to use this as an example of just three rounds. It's quite a simple example of coding. Um, the first one was open coding and it was literally a deconstruction of the data into 130 initial theme or categories or codes using a naming convention. And you can see that the data, you know, some uh, codes drew a lot more data than others and that would be normal and expected for this type of work. And then we moved into round two, which is reordering, renaming, merging, distilling and clustering related codes under a broader banners of codes or categories of codes and there was eight categories developed from the original 132 codes and for the purposes of the audit trail you can see clearly the codes that were brought in are recoded along with the original open codes that led into any of these broader categories of codes and therefore these uh, you can see clearly how exactly um, these codes were made up from the original data. And then finally into phase three, which was make, developing themes and just these eight categories of codes were then developed down into four themes. Um, they stand for um, embedded knowledge, embedded motivation, being empowered and ongoing support. But because this was a longitudinal study, a query was used, a matrix, to subdivide each of these codes by their interview st stages because there was three interviews so that attitudes not only could be looked at for being empowered but also how those attitudes changed over um, the 18 months that the project uh, data collection went on for so an interview at the beginning an interview during an intervention and an interview at the end and so you could see attitudinal change using the matrix as you really uh, developed those four final themes and they were then written up using analytical memos as the final bit so this strategy um, would have been documented in a memo, it would have been agreed by the supervisory team, it would have moved through those three cycles of coding and it would have moved from the you know, descriptive to the interpretive to the abstract.